We're here in the town of Spring Gully on the outskirts of Bendigo, surrounded by national parks and right next to the famous Bendigo Creek. We're here to uncover a famous cricket story that happened in the early 2010s. It was between two titans of the Emu Valley Cricket Association and we were lucky enough to speak with a few legends from that game. Australia is home to more than 1,700 small towns. Behind that award-winning vanilla slice is a triumphant sports story. Welcome to One Week at a Time. So we ended up just sneaking in by one wicket. It had us on a bit of a high when we came into the, you know, to the semi-final, I suppose. Mako's right, we were on a high, but then we realised we were playing United. We, we finished fourth, they finished top. They were a powerhouse, still are a powerhouse of the competition, highly regarded and respected, and they had some stars in their side as well. So I remember the weather was perfect. Um, you know, we were, we were hopeful and confident that we could do something, but, you know, to knock them over for 51, uh, it's just straight up, we're just thinking, how good's this, you know? We're, we're into a grand final. All we've literally got to do is go out there, nudge it around for a bit, home and hose. We might even get tomorrow off. It was Saturday, Sunday finals. So we thought, how good is this? We might out the can. Yeah, pub, pub tonight <laughs> and get ready for next week. Um, so that was just incredible. But then literally in the space of 90 minutes, it just all went, it all just went to hell. Like we, we batted terribly. We lost our you know, key openers early um, and that's just the rot set in. And then the, 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 each wicket that fell, the, the, the nerves built and you could see everyone sort of looking around at each other like we're not what are we doing like this isn't happening is it surely and someone's going to score them, you know? even sure. 10 10 or 15 yeah. we would have been safe but no it just never happened and you know we, we, we blink and then it's five o'clock and, and we've been bowled out for 35 so we've lost the game essentially uh, even though it was played over two innings but effectively we've lost but you have outright wins throughout the year but generally that's when you've dominated another side yeah, effectively a reverse outright meant that at the end of day one, United had won the game of cricket on the first inning. So it was, it was in the book there as far as that's concerned. But because the finals were played over two days and 75 overs each day, uh, there was still ample time to, to achieve a, a, a different result. Obviously, day one got to us both, you know, bowling the side out for 50 even, and they were a good side. And then to bowl us out for 35, like, that's just unheard of when you're talking about finals cricket, unless there's something really wrong with the turf pitch and we're playing on a slab of concrete, you know? <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with it at all. We get to the end of Saturday. I just sprinted straight to the car. I didn't want to talk to anyone and I just wanted to go home and cry. And, um, you know, we're 30 runs behind with another day to play. So you're just thinking, oh, what's the point? What, what do we bother? So, yeah, I think a few of us were in the same boat. Maybe there were only one or two of us like, Sean, who actually believed that we could do something beyond that. There was a few messages getting around and I said, you know, we'll be right. Like we bowled them out, right, for 50. So we thought, well, we can do that. Yeah, sure, they bowled us out for 35, but we can still bowl them out. And the only thing that was racking in my mind is that they weren't going to go out there and score runs. They were just going to stand there and try and survive until we either conceded bat or time, the yeah. game was over. They were just going to bat time. They were none for 10 off 15, 18 overs. So I thought they're not going to try and score. So if we can get them out, we're not going to be chasing a huge amount. And that was really going through my mind. I worked at the radio at the time. So I went back to the studio and um, I looked up Al Pacino's Any Given Sunday speech. you got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. I uh, cut it and put it onto a CD or, you know, yeah, it would have been a CD back then. And then the next day I was ready for it. Turned up, the boys are pretty flat, you know. Very. Yeah, not very happy at all. Um, down in the dumps. And I said, just sit down, shut the door. Just said, just sit down and have a listen. I said, don't say anything, just, just have a listen. So we did that, played uh, that speech out. And um, yeah, look, I don't, for me, I was sort of ready to go anyway, because I'd been talking myself into it. And, you know, whether there was belief there that we could do it, but there was certainly hope that we could do it. Um, and after that, we just, I don't know, it seemed to just lift everyone and they seemed to just go, you know what, let's just give it a crack and see what happens. Sure enough, you know, they, they fell into our hands a bit by just doing exactly that. They didn't want to score. So some of their batsmen who would usually come out and attack just went, you know, and all of a sudden they were out and, you know, next minute they were, what, 103. So effectively what that mm. left us with was 120 to get. 27 overs left in the day. So it basically becomes a, a T20 game before T20 was really even a thing. So we knew with the side we had, we could do that. But we also knew they had Kieran Nile, you know, Robbie Walsh, Robbie Walsh um, yeah. some, Steve Cruz. Some really good, good and bowlers. experienced bowlers that weren't going to just hand it to us. 
Um, and especially after making 35 the day before, you're not overly confident you're going to do anything <laughs> yeah. really with the bats. You just hope. No one was informed. Put yeah. it that way. <laughs> so we just needed to get off to a good start. And I think thankfully we, we got off to a little mini fly, but again, we just kept losing those wickets. I had a you know, bit of a T20 shot and I skied one down the middle of the ground. And once I'd done that, I must admit, I did sort of think, oh, you know, here we are again, five for, you know, 60 or whatever we were at the time. And I thought it's going to take something pretty special. But five from the last over is what we required. Yep. Um, Robbie Walsh bowling it. And as I said, one of the, one of the great bowlers in Champion the NBCA player. at the time. Uh, I think there were a couple of uh, scrambled singles, a few plays and misses. And uh, we get to two balls left and four, uh, four runs to win, three to tie, which would have been no good for us anyway. So we basically needed a boundary with two balls to go and uh, Spinner Gray was on strike. So at that stage, I, I think we'd all say the confident levels weren't, weren't high. Spinner stepped away to leg and slapped one towards covers and it just flew off the bat. And I think the collective group of Spring Gully people were like blowing the ball over the, over the rope because it was, just, it was just one of those great moments. And then the celebrations from there were, were something pretty special. But just a, a crazy two days of cricket. Um, and that's why we love the sport because it's just full of the unexpected. How much do you owe Al Pacino? <laughs> I don't know. You're probably best to ask the other boys. I owe him a bit. I, I still listen to it quite a bit because I, um, I, you know, I obviously have the memory of using it for that particular time. But um, yeah, look, if it worked, um, no one ever said it was specific to that, but maybe it was just enough to get that mindset back on and give them that hope and belief that we could actually do it. Um, I'm not too sure, but yeah, he certainly came in handy, that's for sure.